It has been a while. There's something awkward about when you say, it's been a while when you're doing something like this, because that implies that I've been doing this regularly, and no. However, a couple of things have changed. New location. I have a different window. And on my window, there are some plants. You can't see them now, but I'll add them in. Lovely little lemon plant. Is it a mental you can grow this in just a year? And of course, the succulent plant that was abandoned from my kitchen. But yeah, he's good. Other changes. First of all, I'm no longer working in coffee. So the last video that was made on this channel was me doing a grind and dose or volumetrics, whatever way you want to put it. I wasn't happy with it. The video, not the place where I worked. I was in there for about another month or so. I can't remember off the top of my head. I ended up getting a job in a different place in the city and I was there for about six months. Then I was furloughed. The cafe was being renovated and it was going to be turned into kind of like a cafe restaurant. Ultimately got let go, which is when I came to a realization the only way I'm not going to get dicked around in this industry is if I'm working for myself. So, that revelation in mind, what did I do? Well, I couldn't open up a coffee shop because I don't have the money to do it. That's kind of a lie. I do have the money to do it. I just don't have the money to do it the way I would like to do it. When you're short on funds and you want to work in the coffee industry, you have to make compromises somewhere. You're going to compromise on your coffee. You're going to compromise on your equipment, your location however it is you want to do it. I couldn't make those compromises and still work in coffee at the same time. So I knuckled down and looked out for another one or two places that I could work for coffee in the meantime and came to another realization, unless I'm working for myself, the likelihood of me making the money to be able to get the things that I want in my life is not going to happen. Really good baristas don't stay baristas forever. They either move on into management or they open up their own place and they run it. You cannot stay a barista forever. It just won't pay the bills, and that's a fact of life. But hey, we keep going. So then Dara, what did you end up doing if you're not going to work in the coffee thing anymore? And that's a fantastic question. I got a job fixing computers. You there, computer man, fix my pants. I am the computer man. But does this mean that I'm not making coffee anymore? Does this mean that my coffee journey is over? It's done, I won't be making coffee again. Absolutely not. All this means is that I get to experience and produce coffee in a slightly different way now. Instead of me making coffee behind a bar 24 seven for a guy who doesn't respect me, what I get to do now is I can bring my stuff for producing coffee and bring it into work and I get to share it with people in my job that have never had coffee in these ways before. You gotta be careful if you wanna do this because it's very easy to become obnoxious when you're doing this. I bring in my stuff maybe every second week. I'll bring in a bag of coffee that I got, something interesting, and I'll make V60, I'll make AeroPress or French press or whatever. I'll, I won't bring all of it, I'm limited by the size of my bag. And it's good, I enjoy it, they enjoy coffee, and it's a win-win. And I feel like it adds a bit of value to what I'm doing in the shop, considering that I went through with absolutely no professional experience whatsoever. So, the point of this video. I haven't made a video since I stopped working in coffee. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you guys my brew setup, what I have and what I do, and how I make my coffee at home. It sounds boring, but you're here, so you're obviously here for a reason. And you might just learn something out of this, you might just kind of get an idea of a good way to kind of like organize your space. Let's move over to my setup. And so, here we are. As you can see, we have a wonderful chest of drawers. We do not have a table. Space is on a premium, and I haven't got much stuff. Over on this side, as you can see, I have a few non coffee bits and we'll just kind of ignore that. We're going to start moving from right to left and then we'll go what's underneath and then everything else. So first up I have this guy here that I like to use for just kind of like recording some of my brews. I'll put my phone into it. It's fine. It does the job. It's great. Next up French press. Can't say much about a French press. It's a French press. It's heavy and made of glass. And behind my French press, I keep my growler. Some people call it a growler, you might just be able to call it like, I don't know, a thermos, a flask, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> this guy holds 64 fluid ounces of water. And why I keep that there is so I don't need to go downstairs constantly. And how I fill my jug is down here on the right hand side, 
I have a Brita filter for filtering my water. I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you get one of these because it's always better to work with filtered water than it is with unfiltered water. However, just be aware with this particular model of Brita filter right here, this guy here, which is to let you know just how long is left on your filter, whatever. At the very most, he lies, and at the very least, it's misleading. This isn't telling you what the health of your filter is. This is telling you how old it is and it counts down from 30 days down to zero however it's measured on the side in a percentage so keep that in mind if you haven't been using your filter too much and it goes all the way down to zero there's still life left in your filter continuing on we have our nice kettle here from fellow it's a nice kettle i enjoy it the mat on it is very nice but again from being packed in my bag for a while and doing different things he has picked up the odd scratch and the odd scuff and the plastic here for where it tells you what you want to set the temperature as that's been scratched off uh, again pretty bad because i put it in my bag and the spout did it in fantastic fun the kettle is plugged in just down here on the side of my computer continuing on we have a number two v60 plastic filter and our glass carafe i do have a metal v60 filter that i got from Buffalo. Right now I've been enjoying using paper filters more than I have been using the metal filter. Plastic filter as well. I feel that it holds the heat of the brew better than the metal one does. Even though the metal filter heats up quicker, I feel it loses temperature just a little bit faster. With the Hario number two, I'd like to get a Hario number one. I feel that just the volume of a brew that you get from a number one is nicer than a number two. Under our V60, we have a time war scale. I bought this scales about six months ago. I really like the scales. I was gonna do a video on it, but then I deleted the footage on it. Updated my computer into Linux, so footage is gone. How do I feel about the Time War scale? Really good, really like it, very nice. Uh, I feel this is good, insulates the heat, very nice. I haven't had to charge this since I bought it. It's still on a full charge, it's great, I love it. And it beats spending the same amount of money you'd spend on one of these guys on a scales, 60 quid versus 300 for an Akaya. You don't need an Akaya scale. Continuing on, over here, some coffees that I've been brewing. As you can see, I haven't done anything much substantial with this guy in a while. He's only got about, I wanna say, let's say about 50, 60 grams left in him from a half a pound bag. Really like this coffee. Milk chocolate, coconut, and pink colada. Very nice. Uh, the rummy taste is actually quite pleasant. I enjoy it very much. Next to that, I have a bag of coffee here that's got a little bit of condensation on it. And that's because I just grabbed this guy out of the freezer. As you can see on the roast date, what I'm doing with my coffee now is I'm buying it and just chucking it in the freezer straight away, as is. If I ever need a bag of coffee, I always have some reserve, always have some going. And it's always gotta be fresh. Freezing your coffee is surprisingly effective. I just kinda keep my filters here. Uh, I've got more in the wardrobe, but I just keep those here. In terms of other brewing equipment, I have some more under here, and we'll work our way from the left to the right. And on the very left, I have some loose leaf tea. It's always nice to have yourself just a little bit of tea. I like having tea. Tea is nice, can't complain. And this one's uh, quite good. Next to my tea, I have this guy here. So I keep my cups here, and this guy is half of a brewer. So we'll get the other half out. And what this is, this is a single cup brewer from Bodum. And I picked this up in a charity shop next to my job for about three euro. He's interesting in the sense that it has a cup inside of another cup. And this first cup has some holes in the bottom for water distribution. And then in the second one, you have a nice filter. So you can put your coffee in here first, or you can put your coffee in here first. Yeah, and it works. Um, I have found, depending on how you pour, if you put your coffee in here first, if you pour a bit weird, then what will happen is you'll get your fines and they'll clog up the holes in the bottom, and then your brew time goes into the eight minute range. But still, uh, interesting coffee. Also got my tiki mug that's in behind the glass bottom. Smells like coffee, great. Next to that, I have some jars for the Commandante. It's nice to have jars there, it's always good. If you want to grind up some coffee and then just kind of leave it in there and have it the next day, you can do that. Uh, next to my jars, I've got two books. Well, one of them is my brew diary. And in my brew diary, it's very self-explanatory. I keep my brews. Just kind of write down the information, like the name of it, who brew, where's it from, who makes it, yada, yada, yada. Notes on the label, what I did, and my feelings for how it tasted. 
And it's good to do that because you can always come back and especially like when you're like, I haven't done anything with this in so long. How did I make it last time? I can't remember. Go to your diary. Go to your diary and then you can adjust as you need. The next one is a book that was recommended to me by a person who owns a coffee shop in town. And this is who it's by. That's their name. That is the name of the book. And what it is, it's just 70 pages of really nice coffee theory and talking about different brew methods and practices that you should engage in. And again, it's a nice small little book. If you want to, that's it there on the back. That's your little blurb. If you want to pause it and have a read, you can. As you can see, my one is absolutely disgusting because I took it in my bag with me and I read it out, read over it a couple of times. Really enjoy it. I've been using the recipes inside of it to kind of like standardize my brews, especially when I get stuff in and it's like, so I'm never really kind of like chopping and changing around too much. It's nice to kind of have a little bit of standardization. Moving to the front, we have the Commandante grinder. I've had this now for about, for more than a year and thoughts, love it. Absolutely love it. It is fantastic. It is wonderful. These jars are great, the, uh, the consistency is really good, cleaning it is totally fine. Uh, even now, it's got a nice kind of action on it, I really like it. And it's good in the sense of like, the clicks for, yeah. But it's good, I like it. And then I have a little tea towel down here just for kind of like cleaning up any mishaps or any mess. That's what my brew station looks like now, my little, my little coffee nook. And when I'm brewing, it's very easy to set up. And then that's it. You're set up, you're ready to go. Kettle stays here, kettle is fine. Kettle always has water in it. And that's it, that's my coffee setup. It's nice, it's compact, it's, it's kinda, it's not really neat, it's cluttered, but it's mine. Thank you so much for giving me your time and stopping by today and checking out my little coffee nook. I really appreciate it. And leave a like down below, leave a comment down below and comment in a link to a picture of your coffee nook or your little brew station, whatever. Tell me what you think of mine, I'll tell you what I think of yours, and again, thank you.